We are living in strange times. Perhaps more than ever before in our lifetimes, it is critically important that we stay connected to the divine, our souls, and to keep our energetic vibrations high. That can be incredibly hard to do in the face of the 24-hour news cycle, social media, and personal and relational division. But it is possible to raise your frequency in order to support and manifest good in your life and in the world. The Higher Vibrations Meditation Class with Cynthia Alice Anderson will meet online in June on Wednesday evenings. Higher Vibrations will focus on the transformation of low vibes, opening to peace, finding higher vibrations, and will give practical application for your life. You can drop in for a single Higher Vibrations class for just $15 or enroll in the entire class for the discounted rate of $45. Seating is limited and the Higher Vibration class starts soon, so enroll today at CynthiaAliceAnderson.com slash Higher Vibrations. Natural Awakenings Magazine and Zen Living Realty present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 100, Experience of the Soul. And now your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to the Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I am the host and I'm here today outside with my producer. Hello everybody, this is Dave Croft. Thank you so much for joining us for today. A very, very special outside edition of the Authentic Spiritual Journey. Thank you so much for joining us. This is awesome. It is a very private, undisclosed location that we're thrilled to be in this morning, and we hope you are going to be hearing some nature sounds. We've already heard um, a uh, red-winged blackbird. I've heard some cardinals. I've seen some woodpeckers. So this is a beautiful location where we are, and we wanted to come to you in a real authentic, uh, very spiritual environment. And there's nothing more spiritual for me than being outside. Yeah, than the outdoors, especially, you know, right now we're, we're uh, starting to to peek out of the covers of our uh, of our quarantine, yes. kinda, you know, and uh, and uh, we just felt like it was important to come outside, and uh, I'm enjoying being on camera, the rare day of sighting. Exactly. <laughs> the rare day of sighting, it's like, exactly, yeah. exactly. I feel like we should cue, I'm coming out right now. Right. <laughs> so, so, yes, come out, come out wherever you are, and uh, we are moving, uh, you know, slowly. We're inching forward into uh, more public life, but we're being very cautious and very mindful. I have not actually seen Dave in person for about I eight know, weeks. I know. I just, we just got right down to business. I'm like, here, can you carry some stuff? And we start moving out here, get set up. But yeah. Hey, right. Hey. I was Dave's roadie for you a change. Were, you were. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, yeah, so welcome to show 100. You may remember that we wanted to uh, be in a, in a public location so that we could have a live show. So we're going to do that. It's just we're not going to be that. show 100. Yeah. So this is how the spiritual journey is. You go with the flow, you shift, change, and move, and surrender to whatever's happening. And so I think this is an even better idea than the original one, because as you know, for me personally, being out is a being in God. And I love that. Yeah. And you can't can't beat the view. Yeah, it can't beat the view. I hope some of you are watching on YouTube. I want to mention that when you subscribe, it's really awesome because then every time a uh, video is uploaded, you're notified. And I'm a little slow in the uptake with these things (laughs) to to know how cool it is. But now I've got some people we're subscribing back and forth to each other. And I love supporting their work and they love supporting mine too. So it's great. and, And one of the reasons that it's so important to subscribe is because it helps uh, it all helps our numbers, but it also helps recommend our channel and the program to yeah. other people who are in, interested in the same thing <clears throat> that you are. So we're, 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 we're by, by subscribing and clicking the notification bell, you'll know when anything from the channel hits your YouTube feed. And it's not just uh, the Authentic Spiritual Journey episodes. You've got some other things going out, some videos to support you on your own spiritual journey. Yeah, this month, you know, has been a real busy month for me. Um, I've taught two classes, one for CCU Orlando called 30 Days to Fearless Living, and the other one is my spiritual prosperity course. And next month, I'm also going to be teaching two classes. I'm going to teach a Monday night unexpected prosperity um, 
uh, uh, sorry, not unexpected prosperity. Sorry, that sound. I know. I got to be quiet for a second. I hope I hope that comes through the recording. I'm sure it will. Um, unexpected income is the name of my uh, June class that's happening on Monday nights, and the fee for the class is only one dollar. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's $1, which is, you know, what you pay for a song. So yeah. I think $1 is a deal. And it's a great way for me to support people in knowing how to bring more abundance into their lives. And so that I'm really excited about. Uh, that's one of the classes in June. And the other one is called um, Higher Vibes and or Higher Vibrations or something like <laughs> that. For And it's a meditation class on Wednesday nights. So we're really working together to... Um, uh, really embody the spiritual journey in a new way. And I think that's what's being asked of us right now. Yeah. And you've got also got some, some non-live classes and things that are in the pipeline as well. That's right. I don't so, know if we're ready to talk about that, but... Well, but. those should be launching in... Um, those should be launching next month, actually. Yeah. Yes. Yes, on a different platform. So as soon as one is available, we're going to start announcing it. Probably in our next show, we'll have yeah, more details absolutely. about that. But yes, a lot of busy... It's a busy time for me because of getting so much of my work out, and the work is to support you on the journey, and even to support people we've never even met before. Mm -hmm. But my vision is that we are all in this together, and that's what this work is about, reaching all of us to help us grow, prosper, evolve, and to reawaken our consciousness. That's right. It's nice out here. The reason we're outside today is because it's important to know our place in the universe. And so as Dave and I are in here, sitting here, there's this really expansive feeling. We're surrounded by cypress and oak, beautiful lake behind us, birds, butterflies, insects. Is a lizard over there? Little lizards. Yeah. yeah. And it's so important that we keep perspective on our on our space and place in the universe. Just making space in this moment. There are other voices to be heard. Just making space in this moment. There are other energies to be experienced. Even the wind is informing us right now. So we are in this place. It's in Orlando. Mm -hmm. It wasn't hard to get to. And yet a spiritual experience is being had right in this moment. You know, even as, even as you hear construction, mm -hmm. you know, just a, a single lone worker hammering mm -hmm. something. Right. You know, it's, it's part of it. It's part of it, yes. I was going to say that's a very big woodpecker. <laughs> very slow. <laughs> very slow. 200-pound <laughs> woodpecker. Right, exactly. There's something kind of um, meditative about it. There's something uh, kind of inspiring about it. Here's one person working. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's profound, actually. And so what I notice is there's not one voice that's necessarily louder. One's in a moment, and then one answers. And then something else comes forward. A lesson that nat nature always teaches me is to just relax to be in the moment and realize what I feel and what I think is not all there is. You know, when I was, when I was uh, growing up, we lived on a pretty busy street and uh, there was always traffic just going, going, going up and down. And it never, ever bothered me because it sounded like waves. It reminded mm -hmm. me of the ocean. Yes. To the point where, 
you know, when Shannon and I were looking for, you know, houses and where to live throughout our, our marriage, uh, she would always want to make sure it was far from traffic, but <laughs> I actually liked the traffic. Uh-huh. I believe it. And so even as I hear some traffic kind of in the background, for me, it sounds like, uh, no other way, it sounds like the rhythm of life. It is. Yes, it is. You know, it's just the ebb and flow of, of mm-hmm. all of the, the parts of the world and the parts of the universe intertwined. Mm-hmm. I mean, sure, we need to be better stewards of it, but that the sound of traffic isn't necessarily offensive to me, if that makes sense. Yeah, right. right. It feels, feels very comforting, very soothing to me, just having grown up around traffic. Yes, I, I bet a lot of people in the cities right now are really vibing with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It reminds me of our, you know, a few weeks ago we had our interview with East Forest and it was mm-hmm. the, the, the blending of the old and the new, the traditional and the modern <clears throat> technology and nature. It's kind of what it feels like in this yes. moment. Yes, and that's, that's exactly what this moment is. I was just thinking of him as well and thinking about how the guests that are being attracted to our program that are saying yes to us. Mm-hmm really feel the soul kinship that doesn't have to even be discussed. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I mentioned in his interview, but I, I was um, reminded this morning, because I was listening to it again, that um, so often I discuss goals and writing them down and, and all of that. And I believe so strongly in that process. But one of my teachers said to me several years ago, she said, you know, there's going to be some things simply because of who you are that come your way. You're never even going to have time to write them down. Hmm. And um, this happened with uh, this happened with East Forest. I was in a deep meditation and I had been looking over all those goals and I was going to write it down. And spirit said, no, right now, right now, reach out from this energy. And so I was feeling really connected. I was feeling really expanded. And um, I was really guided to write the email real certain way. Nobody else was going to write it for me, you know. And so I wrote it. And then two days later, East Forest would be delighted to be on your mm. a podcast. I said, really? Awesome. <laughs> you know? So this was, this was a real gift. And... It came from a place of just real deep connection and just trusting spirit. It was a real lesson for me. I think sometimes I think somebody could say it better or, you know, it's part of my, um, as part of my Achilles heel. Mm. And, but, but just being present to whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing and then doing it. Right. Yeah. the rhythm of life you got it it's a good greeting it's a good morning it's a I'm here yeah so we want to well I want to invite you into this spaciousness that we're feeling and I think as we go through life it seems like there's like a beginning and an end to everything (laughs) like okay we're going we're gonna to record the show. Okay, let's get everything organized. Let's, obviously, we have to plug everything in. We have to make sure the sound is good and all that. Those are all the technical pieces. And then we record, and then it's over. But the fact is, really, all we're doing when we're recording is, is picking up on whatever's happening in life and bringing you a portion mm-hmm. of what our experience is. And so this is more free-floating, and I like that. Yeah. Speaking of the rhythm of life. <laughs> That's life in the big city, That's I reckon. Right. Taking care of the grounds, making sure that it's beautiful tomorrow, just like it was today. Those guys are great, too. I always feel really safe when they're here. Hmm. You know, because parks, you know, a single woman walking in a park, you want to know people are around. Yeah. Those there, guys. Yeah, and there was a there was a line waiting to get in. Oh, yeah. People love this park. Yeah. yeah, people love this park. When I'm in nature, 
and I'm, I'm being very careful to really honor the experience I'm having. When I'm in nature, this always happens. I feel like, in one way, totally insignificant, mm. and in another way, definitely part, a necessary part of the whole. And I think that's really important for all of us to have this feeling of the whole everything happening is not about me, mm. you know? Everything in the world happening is not about me. I don't have to have an opinion. When I come here, I don't really get, I don't really have an opinion. What I am is I'm immersed in my soul. I'm immersed in emotion. I'm immersed in this um, experience. I'm not teaching anybody anything. They're teaching me. Mm. I mean, I could talk for years probably about the lessons I, I've learned from trees over the years. I'm the student here. I mean, what they're able to hold and withstand and shelter. and I mean, there's, yeah. And of course, what's so magical about that, they never say a word. You know, when we were in the interview with East Forest, um, one of the things he reminded me of that I need so desperately is time in wilderness. As much as I love this experience, I need to be absolutely away where it is like so still. Mm. Um, and so I'm, I'm uh, planning right now some days away to just be me and my dog, <laughs> probably. Of course. Yeah, me and my dog, and uh, sometime just totally away. It's it's so special and so um, it's such a mindful process because it's not um, nothing around me cares what I think. <laughs> <laughs> You are not important to any of these trees. <laughs> but that's, yeah, I'm, I'm not important, and yet I'm everything right. at the same time, and that's what's so interesting about it. Yeah, there's a great book that um, I've read pretty much my whole life. I've read it many, many times, and I just read it with my son. I thought he was really ready to take it in, and he loved every word of it. And it's called The Education of Little Tree. And it's about a little boy who's um, half Cherokee and how he grows up uh, living with his grandparents in the mountains and what he learns mm. about the trees and, and also, also, of course, the whiskey-making trade. <laughs> and uh, it's full of uh, adventures, but you will probably never look at a tree the same way when you read uh, that book because of their intimate connection. Mm. It's just uh, it's profound his understanding of and his connection to not only the trees, all that is, but that everything, uh, even these trees right now, are, are a life unto themselves, you know, and they have a oh, wow, gorgeous uh, heron is just flying by. Um, and uh, the, the life in these trees is in energy. It's, there's a spirit, you know. They, they even, science now tells us, they even breathe. Just very, very slowly. I think the other thing that always, I mean, this, I always come back to this teaching and I, I, I'm amazed how quickly I can forget it that being patient with the process is like, like nature 
just has its own rhythm. And I think we think somehow we're separate from that because we're human. But in fact, we are nature itself. And we do have really specific um, seasons, like seasons of flourishing, seasons of going inward, you know, seasons of um, rest, you know, seasons of a lot of work, um, seasons of like trudging off to new paths, you know, seasons of really staying the course. And I'm always reminded of this when I'm in nature that the patience, it's like nature is. I don't think a tree ever says, why am I not growing any faster? <laughs> it just is and it just grows and it just stays, you know? I wonder what business meetings would be like if there were just space hmm. or <clears throat> even church meetings. Well, we know. We know how that is for us. Yeah. CCU. We leave space every single Sunday. We do. Yeah. I was talking with a colleague. This is several months ago and... I was talking about our board meetings and I said, well, you know, we always spend the first 15 minutes to half an hour on spiritual things. And she said, my goodness, I've never even heard of that. I said, well, the meetings tend to go better when you do things like yeah, that. Yeah, if you ground them. Yeah, instead of coming in with like an agenda. Right. Even though you have an agenda, you know, and even though business gets done. But space is on the agenda. Exactly. <laughs> yes, yes. So let's, let's take a break here. Okay. If that's okay, and we'll sure. come back and, and continue. Okay. We'll see you right after this. We'll return to the program in just a few moments, but first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, Natural Awakenings Magazine of Central Florida, Greater Orlando. Each month, Natural Awakenings Magazines across the country take a practical look at the latest natural approaches to nutrition, fitness, creative expression, personal growth, and sustainable living. Natural Awakenings Magazine is a free publication and is available in selected stores, health and education centers, healing centers, public libraries, and wherever free publications are located. You could learn more, including advertising opportunities for your business, by calling 407-628-0705. We'd also like to extend our special thanks to Zen Living Realty. Zen Living Realty's mission is to mindfully serve, connect, and positively impact their customers, partners, and community through their Zen approach to real estate. Their vision is to be the most trusted real estate brokerage in the Central Florida area. You can reach Zen Living Realty at zenlivingrealty.com or call 407-800-2717. And now we return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey with your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Welcome back. We're glad you're with us. Um, Dave and I have just been kind of zen this whole, um, this whole episode, and I'm happy about that. I feel so relaxed and so at ease and so at peace, and I'm hoping you're feeling that with us. Yeah, I did have to. I'd have to get a hat. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're kind of staring at the sun. It's at my back a little bit. Uh, no hair, and I need a hat. <laughs> well, one of the things I love to do when I'm in nature is to um, definitely just be still like we've been doing. And um, 
one of the things I like to do is an angel walk. An angel walk is where you are walking, and it can be a public park. It can be in your backyard even. Um, we've done it on our church property as well where you just walk, but it's a real mindful walk in silence. So you're not listening to anything. You're not talking. Um, it's really best if you don't have your animal with you too. Like I so often walk my dog, but an angel walk, you're just really, really present, you know, to what's happening. And you'll find if you do this that the trees uh, have messages for you that you will even begin to see images. You'll go, wow, I see a face in that tree. Or you'll say, wow, that looks like something. And then a bird across your path will cross your path. Or in the case of when I used to do this at Unity Village, two or three deer would just walk in front of me really quietly like, oh, hey, what? there's a human and we're just going to keep walking because she's quiet. There was no fear. They wouldn't run off, you know. So it really... It really places you uh, as an aspect of nature rather than as a taker or an observer. Mm. And I think we usually go into nature, you know, first we're in awe, and then we go, oh, wow. We're, as I said, well, we're so insignificant and yet apart. Well, when you do an angel walk, you are nature itself. That when you feel the sun, you say, I am the sun. You know, when you feel the wind, you say, I am the wind. But it's not a thinking. It's a knowing felt sense. And this is a profound, expansive experience for me. And I I would have really encouraged you to think about doing that, you know, and whenever it works for you, whenever it works for you. But it's profound for me. I've I've experienced something like an angel walk because I've never specifically done that, but actually on my motorcycle, on my bike. Yeah. No headphones on, not listening to music, just the steady hum of the engine. And yeah, you just kind of, everything slows down. Even though you might be going 50 miles an hour, everything just kind of slows down and kind of hypersensitive and hyper aware of, of everything. Well, I think there's... I think it's very spiritual. Uh, anything can be that spiritual. It's just you dropping into that space. Mm-hmm. Whether it's horseback or on foot or yes, on I'm, a bike. Yes, I'm really glad you mentioned that too because, yeah, it doesn't have to be just on an angel walk. Mm-hmm. I have a friend that really finds that fishing. That's his connection. He feels absolutely one with all that is when he's fishing. Wow. Yeah. And so if there's a place you ha- you're not feeling that, that's that's the uh, finding it. But usually we all know we just don't usually take the time to do it. Mm. Well, now you have time. <laughs> yeah, the last couple of months, yep. you know. Yeah, my hope for this time is that it changes our life rhythms. And I know for so many of us, we've been working harder because of figuring out how to transition everything from in-person, you know, to online. Um, But my rhythm, the rhythm of my life is different. I'm surprised at how little I go places and how I was, I felt like I was running from thing to thing. So that's been a wonderful change for me. Just driving here, I I realized this was... This is my first time on a toll road in two months. Right. And this is, like, this is the furthest from my house I've been in two months. Right. That's, yeah, I don't think that's probably ever been in your adult life. No, not not staying yeah. in one spot. No, I mean, you're a gigging musician. You've yeah, always got yeah. somewhere to go. <laughs> but, yeah, and just because we'd go to the grocery, and, you know, the grocery's just a couple of miles, you know, down the road or whatever, but, mm-hmm. yeah. It felt a little bit like when you move away and then you maybe come back and visit a town you used to live in and things are the same but feel different even though they're all the same. There's, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe you've changed a little bit. I know it's only been a couple of months, but. You do come back changed though. I, I feel that. I feel that I've been changed at a cellular level mm-hmm. these last couple of months um, because I've done so much deep inner work that 
just my life, my experience of people, my experience of conversations is really different. I, I'm much less attached to reactions of others. And, you know, I deeply care about how people feel. I deeply care about people's spiritual experience. I also know and really um, can make space for just because somebody has an experience, say, of my teaching or me as a person, that's their experience, and it doesn't have anything to do with who I really am. Hmm. You know, that my value as a human has nothing to do with how my message is received or not received. Right. You know, or I, I just am, uh, feel very detached from what, quote, others may think. And that used to be very important to me. And I, more and more, I just know I have to do what I'm doing. And yes, I mean, there's discussions. And yes, I'm sure there's um, uh, agreements that have to be made. You know, that's that's not an issue. But it's just the lack of attachment to what others think, um, getting clear about what's mine to do. That's been a real gift for me of this time. And it's, it's true of the podcast where we are at 100. You know, this is how I would talk to Dave if no one were listening is like, you know, I feel like I finally know what we're doing on this podcast. Yeah. And we we were just hanging out. We'd just sit and listen, maybe drink a little bit more coffee, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah. And so I, th I think that um, this time of going inward has been necessary for all of us. And my hope is just that you've all been doing it. And I know our listeners, everyone I've talked to has done bigger inner work you know, during the last couple of months of their lives, it was forced. I mean, it's like, well, what else am I going to do? I can't mm -hmm. work. I can't go anywhere. And, you know, there's only so much Netflix somebody can do. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it um, it's an interesting mixture of a bunch of brand new things mm -hmm. met with doing the old things in a new way. Yeah. Whether it's online church or whether it's, recording remotely or whether it's coming out here. Yeah. Well, in, and in my career, it's been really interesting. Um, I've always thought how cool it would be to be able to minister at several churches by being online. Well, for the very first time um, in this uh, quarantine, you know, kind of self-imposed shelter at home, I, I was able to be in two ministries at one time on a Sunday. I was physically present at CCU Orlando and giving the message at Unity of Delray Beach at the same time. Mm. So uh, that was a, that's a career shift for me. Just thinking about my message going out to not hundreds, thousands in one Sunday. So that's a, that's a shift. You know, the podcast, the people that have contacted me I'm not reaching out. They've contacted me or now the people I've visioned having on the show for a mm -hmm. long time. And now it seems pretty easy that they want to come on. Yeah. So I know that there's been a shift in me because of what's coming my way. And I've, I've also really gotten clear about what energy I'm willing to be around. Mm -hmm. And there's certain energy I will not allow in my life anymore. And there's other energy I can't get enough of, and that's what's coming my way. So <laughs> that feels really good, and it feels really positive for the podcast because of our listeners being all over the world and people being so impacted. I just think this next year is going to be the best year we've had so far on the show. Yeah, when you, when you reach a milestone like 100, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you want to do something and you want to commemorate it and, because it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. But uh, also you take a look backwards— you know, what worked, what didn't, you know, if you've been with us for a while, I know you've heard the audio improve, you've heard things change, you've heard the format mm -hmm. change a little bit, but what's been consistent is we're with you on your journey. Now, let me ask you, I don't mean to turn this into an interview, but... Oh, that's okay. But what do you see next? Where, where do you see show 150 or 200 or even 101? Well, that's a great, great question. I see us really partnering with other people that are um, 
helping us all wake up to the soul that we are. And I think East Forest is a part of that. I think some of the other individuals that are coming forward, you know, to interview are part of that. Um, and I also uh, believe my teaching is deepening and expanding. So I'm attracting different people, and I think people are attracting me into their, you know, into their force field kind of. So I think the message we're already giving is going to deepen, but I also think it's going to expand and bring in people that um, would not have ever met unless they heard about them on this show. Mm. You know, I don't think a lot of our listeners knew East Forest, but now people all over the world are going to be listening to his music. I know. I didn't. Exactly. And I love it. It's right up my alley. Oh, it is. And as a composer, I was like, oh, wow, I hope you really connect with him. Yeah. And and I also think, you know, one of the interviews we're doing, or, or sorry, one of the interviews we did this month was somebody I really admire, a woman who's been a therapist for 45 years, specializing in recovery and addiction and codependence. You know, she was so impactful in my life and that we're still connected 25 years later and that she's going to be on our show, it just uh, makes it so meaningful for me that I'm now sharing somebody so special to me with the world Mm. who's helped, you know, thousands of people really wake up to their goodness by knowing they're worthy, you know, by knowing that they matter, by knowing that they can say no to abusive situations. Um, So I'm really excited about having, you know, guests on and also... I've never been more excited about my own message. So I think that that's coming forward. And I think the the um, the classes that I'm doing in June, you know, with um, unexpected income and with the um, meditation classes, we're going to be, you know, in the meditation classes, really seeking to have this really high spiritual energy. And in the unexpected income, it's going to really be practices. You know, what do I do? How do I manifest? And so I'm really getting the two... Uh, the two polarities of true manifestation. So I think that's going to really support people on a greater level. And it's going to be divine timing with those topics because everybody is going to need unexpected income right now. And it's, it's a work I've done for years and I have a tried and true method. I've got a, you know, a short pamphlet on it that's very inexpensive. It's five dollars, <laughs> and it's just basically to cover the cost of, you know, really nice printing and you know. So anyway, I'm really excited about uh, bringing those topics in because of the way it's going to really support people on their journey, and that's my goal, just to support people on the journey, you know, and to reach as many people as we can. Because once we reach a million people, the world will change for the better. Mm-hmm. I do think though we need to reach critical mass. I think as individuals. We, we do make a difference. We make a difference, you know, in our circle, in our jobs, in our families. But I want to see the world change into living, talking about, seeking to be more spiritual in every aspect. And that's why I think I need to reach a million people. Is when we reach critical mass, the world will change. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely... If I can just, I, I definitely feel like a, a focus and um, I feel like um, teaching. Mm hmm. Well, what for you, you mean? No, for you. Oh, for me? I, oh. I feel like yeah. um, because, you know, we've had this conversation. Sure. You're very, very talented and lots of different ways that you kind of, you could pour yourself out into people. Um, and I, I feel that uh, teaching is kind of, bubbling to the, to the top mm-hmm. and uh, in, in many forms, whether it's in person, whether it's on the podium on a Sunday morning, or whether it's, you know, virtual classes or whatever. Yeah, I'll be honest. I am so surprised at how much I love teaching online. I love the podcast. I love teaching online. I love Sunday morning. I'm, I continue to be surprised at how much I love it. It's like, um, but then when I think back, like, Uh, you know, I often talk about your life plan, you know, looking back at what you love to do. I mean, when I first got a guitar, I learned two chords, D and A7. You can do a lot with those two (laughs) chords. And um, the first thing I did was go to my school and say, hey, I'm learning guitar. I wonder if I could go play for the little kids. (laughs) And so uh, every time I learned something, 
And, you know, I was probably, what, 15? And, um, you know, I was playing percussion and piano and stuff like that and clarinet and, and things then. But somehow I wanted to go teach the kids songs with guitars. So teaching has always been something yeah. I really love to do. And um, and then in uh, after college, when I was teaching, I won a Target, I won a teaching, um, it was like a teaching grant from the Target Corporation. It was excellence in teaching uh financial gift and it's funny that i it never occurred to me that with all those things the teaching was really something. teaching was a through line yes through all that yes and i taught you know because i taught school mm-hmm. i taught when i was even conducting that was that's teaching you know because yep. i was with a youth orchestra and i would do camps you know and then i was a youth director all that's teaching Sunday morning, that's teaching. So it's funny that I'm just now getting that at 51. <laughs> Somebody hit me over uh, the head. But what, what do you think about the podcast, Dave? Because it, it so often seems all about me because I'm the host. But the truth is, you're, you're without you, there's no podcast. I'm just riding, riding shotgun, you know. <laughs> um, it's so, so difficult for me to kind of remove the, the, all the technical things that have to come oh, in. Right. You know, even like setting up, like I hadn't seen you. All right. Physically in eight weeks. And I'm like down to business. All right, here we go. Can you help carry this? I got this, this. Oh, There's too much wind right here. Okay, we need some light. And so, um, so yeah, I think probably just enjoy it more, you know. And, and mm-hmm. this was as, uh, as grumpy as I probably seemed dragging all this gear out here. Uh, I'm very glad we're here. Yeah, good. Good. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little, it's, uh, as our listeners, you don't know what goes on behind the scenes <laughs> to make a show happen. And, you know, there's always, there's hang time, there's coffee, often something good to eat. But then there's setup. Mm-hmm. You know, there's blood, sweat, and tears that go into the podcast. <laughs> and uh, it's why your financial support and your listening means so much because what looks like a, you know, 40, 45 minute show can be hours of work and is, in fact, hours of work behind the scenes. And all those things, production, hosting, all those things cost money. Hmm. And so if you value those things, we know you're going to continue to support it financially. And um, I'm really very um, detached in a way that if, if financial support didn't continue for the podcast, I would know it's not meant to be. Hmm. But I believe it is. And I know we're doing good work, and so I'm always grateful when the financial support comes forward because it helps us it helps us reach more. It helps us reach more, and I know we're impacting lives. So we're honored, I guess I should say to all of you, to be um, supported by you. We're honored to be able to help you, you mm-hmm. know, on the journey. And we seek to bring shows that are really lifting you up, that are both making you more aware of who you are, and yet expanding you into all that God is. So this is our hope. This is our goal. And through your emails, through your financial support, through your attending classes, all this lets us know, you know, we're on the right track. Yeah. And thank you for your support of 100 episodes. Thanks for listening. Um, obviously, you can hit experienceofthesoul.com and go and listen to all of the episodes. Just click on the archives. There's an archive search feature at the bottom of every page and 100 episodes. And that's not, that's just 100 episodes of this show, not all the oh. daily affirmations. And if we've done 100 episodes of the show, that means we have 100 messages online. We have 100 meditations and hundreds of daily affirmations. Yes, yes. And those affirmations, I'm telling you, those things are so dialed in. I, I'm i the one that records them. And when I'm listening, I think, oh, this is exactly what I needed. And Dave and I really, you know, create a spiritual space when we're creating those. That's all there is to it. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like whatever I'm receiving and giving is a gift to me from the universe. I don't feel like, oh yeah, I'm giving you an affirmation. No, not that at all. I'm channeling the affirmation. (laughs) I'm receiving it and I'm giving it and then I get to go back and listen and go, that was exactly what I needed. The one that I listened to this morning, uh, because we record, you know, Mm -hmm. earlier is the one, I am the sun. And what are we doing? We're sitting right in the sun. It reminds us to shine brightly. All those, all those, 
phrases from that affirmation. <clears throat> as soon as we sat down, we're right, you know, very present for me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so this is our hope for you, friends, that as you dial in, as you listen, it brings you into the moment. It makes you more present and realize all the good that you are, all the good that God is, and your place and space in the universe. Amen. So we thank you for listening. And um, as always, we seek to support you on the journey. So we thank you for your love and support. Show 100. Uh, We came, we saw Dave. We uh, did show 100. And so we'll leave you with a few nature sounds as we leave. Blessings on the journey, dear friend. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey presented by Natural Awakenings Magazine and Zen Living Realty. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is also made possible through the continued support of our angel patrons, Dove Borland, Peter Gibson, Paul Caswell, Arlene Meyer, Kathy and Terry, Marsha Mott, Nora Miles, Diana Cox, Leslie Williams, Susanna Garcia, Shayla Mount, Dorothy Moore, Aggie Payton, Taryn Tucker, and Anna Evans. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2020, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.